All right, so it's time to uh, texture this up. Um, at the moment, uh, you know, it's all a bit blue. So what, one thing to remember is this color that you kind of assign up here, um, you know, this isn't a texture or anything like that. This is just uh, a color used in 3ds Max to, you know, to, to, that you will see. Now, if you exported this and you put it into some other piece of software, um, the games engine or something, uh, this material, this blue, it wouldn't come through with it. It's not something that's technically really assigned to it. Um, so yeah, just just something to bear in mind, I suppose. Um, if you're just you know, because sometimes in, with a model you might just want a, a flat color to be assigned to something. Um, but if you want that to actually be exported into something else, you would need to apply a texture regardless. But for us and for architectural visualization, you know, you rarely will have that. Um, so we need to apply textures to it. So what we're going to do, uh, what I would suggest to you guys is um, a place where you can get these textures from. Now, let me go back to the home page of this website. I just downloaded this to use as my example, actually. But this website is called CC Zero Textures. Uh, really nicely made materials, um, you know, free to download and use. Uh, there's plenty of other websites that, you know, that are like this, but this is, I thought, a good one. If I go to assets here, uh, yeah, there's, you know, hundreds, all these you know, categorized into everything that you might need um, for any architectural stuff that you might be doing. Um, obviously, you can create your own custom textures, but when you're just starting out like we are uh, for this project, um, you know, having them made for us is going to be really good. So, yeah, for the reference images, you know, we don't we don't necessarily have to stick to this, but um, you know, I, I would imagine this is kind of um, it's kind of cladding. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to see. So what I what I chose, I chose these kind of brick uh, bricks here. Load this up. It's going to go slow on me. Okay, we get there eventually. So and you can see the material obviously a bit more. Um, I'll try this. It, it might not look good, and we might have to go for something else. But I'm going to try this for now. Um, and you can see you can download different resolutions. Um, so 2K is generally a good one to go with, unless you want to do some obviously real sort of uh, you know high quality renders, um, or you're zooming in and particularly close to a particular part of the building then you might want to go for higher resolution images, um, kind of up to you. And it, again, it's going to kind of de depend on the uh, the power of your own computer, your hardware, um, as to, to what you might do, because that's going to increase render times and things. Uh, PNG, we don't really need to worry so much about, unless your texture um, supports transparency. But then, even then, you don't, the way things work, you can get away with JPEGs. Um, uh, and yeah, so that's fine. If any of the assets on this website have this little S here, uh, that's really talking about a different piece of software called Substance Painter. Um, you know, which is a whole other thing, but we're just looking at texturing directly in 3ds Max for now. So we're just gonna yeah, click that to download it. What you'll get is a folder um, with a whole bunch of um, images in. Um, so what I've done is I've put the folder into my project folder. If I double click it, these are the only two that I, I'm going to recommend you use at the moment. Uh, you'll see a load of other ones. Uh, I've deleted them, but because we're just focusing on the basics really at the moment, that's why. So I've got the one that's for roughness and the one that's for color. Okay. Um, yeah, so go ahead and sort of download those and, and see what you can get. Uh, for your own model, so I'll kind of let you decide that on what you want to use. So come back to 3ds Max, uh, and up here we've got the material editor. I'm going to click that to open it. Okay, and here we are. Now these are all the kind of materials that I can create. Uh, depending on what render engine you're using, you might have access to different materials. Um, but we're just going to stick with the standard render engine scan line rendering okay because again we're just starting out we just want to learn the process before we start diving into all different render engines and things like that you'll probably see 
um, lots of uh, talk about some uh, a render engine called V-Ray or maybe Mental Ray. They are um, very expensive add-ons, if you like, um, that not everyone is going to have access to, uh, particularly starting out. Um, but however, you know, you will get better results from them if you get something like V-Ray and you pay a lot of money for it. You're gonna you're gonna be able to create these, you know, photo realistic uh, renderings. With a scanline renderer, it's going to be much more difficult to achieve that, but we can get some nice results regardless, and it's going to help us learn the process, which is the main thing at the moment. So anyway, with that said, here are my materials that I've got access to. I'm going to drag in it's just a standard material. What you'll see here is um, all the different channels that you can um, sort of build your material with. Um, we have one for color, which is going to be diffuse color, and we have one for roughness, which in this instance is going to be under bump. So let's go to diffuse, go to general, and we're going to load it up a bitmap that we already have saved. I'm going to go to bitmap there. I'm going to go to my desktop where this is saved. Some of my folders here. So here's my project folder. There's the textures, and there's the one for color. Something to bear in mind with textures on 3ds Max is that it will remember the path to that material, okay? Which for me um, was obviously here in my project folder. So if I was to then move, you know, this file or delete it, I would no longer see the material in 3ds Max. So do bear that in mind. Um, and then bump. I'm going to plug that into uh, the roughness. Um, I don't want to yeah, focus too much on the materials here because uh, materials kind of been covered uh, before. I do have that video on um, materials in 3ds Max if you want to uh, look through that to understand these a bit better. But um, yeah, that's not the focus of this video. So anyway, that's how we're going to build our material. Uh, let's close material editor down. In fact, sorry, no, I went back up because I want to apply this material. So I'm going to double click the main material, click up here to apply it, and obviously we don't see that, we just goes grey. So I need to click this icon here, show shaded material in the viewport, to be able to actually see this material in the viewport. Okay, so now let's close this down, but I still can't see it. It's just still grey. <clears throat> because this is an edited model, um, you know, it's not just a flat uh, primitive shape, I need to add a UVW map. So if I go to UVW map, uh, again, the material I can kind of see now, but it's all a mess. So I need to change the mapping. Uh, in this instance, I'm going to change it to a box. Uh, <clears throat> again, we're getting somewhere. I can see my material, but I mean, those, you know, those bricks are way out of proportion. So what I can do is use the U and V tiling here. So if I crank that up, you can see those tiles getting tiled, bricks getting tiled, I should say, uh, and in that direction as well, until you get that kind of proportion right. Um, something like that, maybe. And there we go. OK, you can, if you want, at this point, turn edge faces off. OK, cool, so that's fine. But obviously, the problem is that the material has gone through to obviously the inside because I've applied the material to the entire model, which in this case is all of the walls. <clears throat> so, you, you know, in some instances, you're going to have to apply materials per polygon. So if I just go up to my, back to my material editor, um, move this over, I drag in another material. This one, I don't have anything else for. I'm just going to change the diffuse color just generally to, um, I don't know, kind of a, this, this color. <laughs> this will do for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm going to go to polygon. Bear in mind, when you're going into editing the, the model, you won't see those textures anymore until you've you know come out of all of the editing. So I'm going to just come inside my model to the interior, you know, select a few polygons here and assign that material to them, to just those polygons that are selected. So when I come out of this now, 
you see those interior polygons that I had selected have had the new different material applied to it. All right, so it's going to be a bit annoying. This is the one thing that is annoying about the way that we built the model. Uh, it made the modeling process a lot easier, but not the texturing because we need now need to kind of select every single polygon on the inside of this model. So let's select those, for example, and keep assigning the different material to it. Okay, a bit annoying, but it's part of what needs to be done. And obviously there, you know, use your creativity, your interior design skills to, to choose colors and stuff for that. You, you could bring in a, um, a bitmap again for material for if you wanted to have some kind of uh, wallpaper or something going on there. Um, what's nice about this is I can now open up my material editor once the interior has been done. Um, and I could then just be like, actually, I want to change the color of that. Bring this up again. And maybe I want to change that wall to like a big pink feature wall. So, you know, you can just change that here and it will update directly on your model. Okay, nicely done. All right, so let's leave it that for now. That is you know, an introduction to the texturing process, but your job now is going to be to find materials for everything else <laughs> to, to texture the whole entire model. Okay, I'm just introducing you to the process. And then um, in the next video, uh, you'll find that I would have textured the whole thing. Um, and then we will look very briefly at some basic lighting setups um, and then, you know, uh, look at rendering. Okay, hopefully that's all right.